fellow practitioners, fellow Dharma protectors, good evening to you all. Amitofo. Today, I would like to borrow this opportunity, time from you all, to explain, talk about understanding how we understand Buddhism. Actually, the fact that we can gather here, learn together, means that all of us have affinities with Buddha. So learning about understanding Buddhism, the first thing is we need to know our teacher. Our teacher is Shakyamuni Buddha. Uh, Shakyamuni Buddha means... What does Shakyamuni Buddha mean? What is his goal? What is his uh, area of work or responsibility? What is his uh, career or his achievements? Only when we clear about this, only then we have confidence, solid confidence in him. Like chanting Amitabha Buddha's name. We need to understand who Amitabha Buddha is. Understand the pure land he built. Only we, when we understood about him and his work, then we will grow confidence to seek rebirth in his pure land. Therefore, I would like to borrow this opportunity to uh, explain, simply explain uh, about Buddhism. Because we have a very short time, uh, at most uh, 45 minutes, half an hour to 45 minutes, because it's quite late at the time being. I um, would like, first time when I arrived in Taiwan to learn Buddhism, the first book about Buddhism is Understanding Buddhism. It has helped me a lot in what part? It helps me to build my confidence to give me a sense of purpose, a goal of what I should do, uh, work towards. So how I uh, proceed with this path, uh, how I guide myself uh, going into the future where I would serve all sentient beings. What kind of attitude should I have when I'm doing this? To benefit all beings. So the content of this uh, book, Understanding Buddhism, talks about Shai Muni Buddha as well. And I also read about Shai Muni Buddha's chronicle, his um, biographies. And every time I read his biography, I, um, you know, my tears drop uh, naturally. Like it just, there are many times when I read it, tears came down from my face because I. Um, felt the, the greatness from his uh, biographies. Because as a successor to a throne, he could have enjoyed the wealth, the powers from his fathers and his family. He would success his father, succeed his father to not just you know, rule over the, his kingdom, also, per the prophecies in his um, era, there were a lot of um, Brahmin who prophesied he would uh, have a huge influence over the whole India and the world. But as you can see, he has not chosen this path to success, succeed his father. He rather live under uh, a tree every day, sleep under the tree, and get by by asking for alms from the common folks so that he could have 
or use all the energy to focus on benefiting the sentient beings to contribute to all beings to this society, to this country to this world that's where his greatness came from that's what that's why he is great in this man, in this sense. He didn't ask for any return, anything in return. Therefore, from the uh, original vow, the sutra of original vows of Siddhigamba Bodhisattva, Dijang Bodhisattva, he has made a vow that uh, when he mentioned about Buddha, Shaimbe uh, Buddha, the Buddhas of ten direction uh, always praised. Buddha about one thing. What is it? He could be a Buddha in this era, in this world, Saha world. It's not easy to be a person like a Buddha in this world. Because a lot of Bodhisattvas, it's common uh, knowledge among them, they seen, observe this world. Very, very hard to be ed uh, educated back to good. It's very easily fallen into the uh, bad deeds. So Buddha himself is not uh, did not give us give up on us. He used all his energy, all his wisdom, to help us to return back uh, to goodness, so that we don't fall back into that suffering cycles. That is why he is so great. And this is hard. This kind of teacher, this kind of person with such compassion, is hard to find. Especially uh, when we talk about people of the young people of current times, we should have a, we should read it in depth. His chronicles of Shaman Buddha and his biologies, uh, biography. Sorry, if you read it in depth, you really understand who this person is and what he did, how much he gave up, and for what. Then you would naturally have tears flowing out because we understand how hard his work is, how thankless his work is sometimes. If we reflect back on ourselves, you know, sometimes when we met some obstacles in our life, when we try to do something good or try to do something useful, we might met some obstacles, issues, and then we felt very, you know, sad, not being understood. But if you look at Buddha's time, he has to face a lot of humiliation as well. There was a person who swear at him actually, not just go swear with all the words, dirty words. But he just sat there, not responding, not just not responding, he's smiling when this um, proceeding, this swearing is going on. He didn't even have a sense of anger in his face. A lot of people, when they got humiliated like that in the face, in front of everyone, usually they would just go to the kitchen and get a knife in retaliation, you know, trying to tell them to stop. So that is why, that is another aspect of Buddha. Why is he the Buddha and why is he great? So those are the examples we should know. Uh, and I'm very interested in this as well, myself, when I started learning. Uh, I went back to Indonesia, uh, this uni, to give uh, talks, Lama talks. And I always bring up understanding Buddhism, this uh, uh, Buddhism. Because to introduce who Shai Merdeba is, to understand who this person is, so that we can felt his work, how it benef his work benefits us. So if I learn from Shai Merdeba today, uh, what we need to know, what is the biggest thing we should learn from him? What is the biggest trait we should inherit from Buddha's example? Tolerance, able to take in all things, good and bad, just like an ocean. Like ocean, he can take in all kinds of streams, water, uh, let, let, be it rain, be it mountain streams, be it sewage, everything, he can take in everything. His heart is big. And this is what Shaiman Buddha let us experience a person of that scale in heart. When you have this broad heart, big heart, uh, able to take in anything, tolerate everything, more than tolerate, beyond tolerate, take in everything, then your life will be more positive, more um, 
more positive, more active. You will not felt depressed because of few issues, problems. There is impossible to have 100% smooth path on your life, not even Buddha. But how you treat these issues is important. You must remember my word today. Whatever you face today, whatever situation you face today, if you have the right attitude, if you have an attitude of taking in with a big heart and understand it, you have, you can convert this issue into your motivation, into your energy, so that you can reflect, you can fix where it goes wrong in yourself and others, and then it becomes a positive outcome for you. So that's what we should learn from Shaimani Buddha, able to take in everything, a big heart, to tolerate and to take in everything. Every All kinds of people. When I started, when I just become a monk, a novice monk, uh, my biggest, biggest problem that I have to encounter is, my biggest issue is arrogance and temper. My temper is big, very bad temper. If a person is arrogant and big temper, who wants to be your friend? That's why I have few friends. I don't have much, I don't have many friends. True, it's true. Also, because of the temple, my bad temple, I also lost a good friend of mine. So after that, I reflect, if I don't change this bad temple and my arrogance, it will become a biggest obstacle in my path of life, in my life. And also, after all this transformation that I have after learning from Buddha, I, all my friends, my family started to learn Buddhism. And a lot of them learned because of seeing my transformation from someone who was very angry into someone who was very calm, able to take in situation well. Even though I still have tempo, but I still um, I have improved a lot from then. Uh, I have transformed from getting angry, reactive towards situations that are not to my likings, but into something, maybe if I meet some troublesome people, I felt more on a pity side than or more sympathetic side rather than being angry. Like this person has a lot of issues he has to face. That's why he's like that. So once you understand who your teacher is, his example that he has set, then only then you have confidence in learning from him. So let's continue into the main uh, topic of the day. Uh, when we're learning Buddhism, the first thing we need to know, uh, Shakyamuni Buddha uh, has talked a lot of uh, teachings, has a, uh, how we talk a lot, how we choose um, a path. I'm oh, sorry, sorry. Shaimuni Buddha has given a lot of methods of cultivation, but we need to learn how to choose the path that is suitable to us. Uh, and all this um, has to in accordance to our to our levels. So there are tr there are there are few ways to choose the path that is suitable to you. Uh, number one is it has to met your current situation, your living environment. Your capability is number one. If, are, are you able to learn from it? If you're not able to learn, catch up with the teachings, then you will find uh, everything is an uphill battle and you lose a lot of motivation and issues. So, for example, why are we choosing uh, pure land method? Because it's simpler for us. Sometimes when we have issues, met some problems, we put all our worries into this one Amitabha, uh, seeking his help to give me strength uh, to overcome, to face these conflict issues face to face uh, and overcome it. So how? By increasing my wisdom. Uh, so it's easy because I have a central focus. But if you choose something like 
Zen Buddhism. We have to know that Zen Buddhism is really good. Uh, it's not because it's bad, but it's, the standard is very high in order to master it. You need to able to see through all phenomena and aware of its essence so that we are not getting dragged away by this um, surface uh, appearance. So you need to have a very sharp sharp observation so it's very hard to master it one lifetime other than the capabilities we need to learn about our we need, it need to be suitable this method needs to be suitable to our current living environment and also it has to fit in our current realities that we are living you know, this era sensibilities of this era right now we are living in a very tight society i mean in the big societies Without societies, without communities, uh, we cannot survive. Say, if we want to eat today, where did the food came from? Where did this food provision from? If you want to wear clothes, where did this clothes weave? Where was this clothes made? The fact that you can live in this world and not just survive, you can live with peace, in peace with food with shelters with uh, safeties protections it relies on everyone societies without this society we can't survive hmm. so right now since we are living in this society we need to choose a method that allow us to continue to live like that suitable to our current realities otherwise if if we pick something that are not suitable to our current living environment realities, then it's just a waste of time then, because we can't get the result. Like picking a major in university, all right. If we choose something wrong, as in in uh, not suitable to us, hence it's wrong to us, then it becomes a obstacle rather than a path to success for us. All right. If we choose something that are really suitable to us, uh, then we will be achieving success relatively easy and quickly and our life will get better and better uh, actually I myself is an example when I was uh, back in uni my parents always forced me to learn to be a doctor uh, when I'm choosing a major my I don't have the ability to learn such a medical knowledge it's too too much for me I, it's not suitable for me uh, some people also like to be a business uh, finance, run business, economy. Uh, so, if you know, I was given a choice to select these uh, majors that I like, then I would, uh, I would be, a, I might be a successful entrepreneur. <laughs> so, if we expand this, a lot of parents as well, they always force their own children to learn uh, what they want rather than what the children want. Uh, they hardly communicate with their own children about what they what their aspiration is. Right? They, instead they force their aspiration on their children. Therefore, uh, that's why it's hard to see a good relationship between children and parents. Uh, because both sides do not communicate properly. Uh, everyone thinking everyone going on their way. There's no communication in between. For example, a young person who wants to build a family, first find a right couple. To have a couple, you need to have a few of love, romance. And beyond that, you need to have assessment on this person's character. Is this person reliable? Is this person trustworthy? Right. Only when you get more understanding towards each other, only then you start to, ab to be able to live together and go on this life together in a long, long time. Otherwise, if one person just marry on impulse for fun or for, the, for, for that one moment of impulse, it, it won't last most of the time. Uh, there are cases where some of the lay Buddhists, they talk to me, uh, oh my God, you know, now, right now I already married, I felt very uh, hard, painful, uh, a lot of issues. Uh, uh, and then I, before he married, I asked him, you can go to be a monk if you want to. 
uh, right now he already have family and encountered issues um, because he refused like, I don't really want to go to be a monk and then when he married he kind of like faced all the troubles he talked to me say I you know I, right now thinking back to that choice I could have chosen you know this path but you know, it's, it's already too late so back to the point Buddhas talk about all these you know they call it 84,000, actually more than that, of methods. The whole thing is just to give you a choice so that, give you more choice so that you can pick something that's suitable to you. But you need to pick one. Uh, that's why today when we choose to learn uh, uh, to learn from Pure Land Buddhism, that means chanting Amitofo. Why? Because it's easier. First, the standard is you don't have to sever all the afflictions. Uh, other methods other than pure land needs to sever the affliction in this lifetime for our case we only need to suppress it the afflictions the problems as long as you're able to suppress not allowing it to uh, react to help to come out uh, first how do you suppress it by putting your focus on Amitabha Buddha's name Amitabha and then Ask, seek, reborn in pure land, and then you can sort out your affliction with it. That's why it's in the two stage rather than one off. So that's why if we don't choose the right method, uh, even uh, when you choose this path that's relatively easy, we still have a lot of affliction after learning 10 years. Why? The more we learn, the more we chant, the more affliction we have. Because we haven't mastered the method. Uh, so this one is already relatively easy. We still take a lot of energy to learn, let alone something that requires you to cut it off, cut off your, all your affliction right now in one lifetime. Therefore, we need to choose something in line with our capability and our era and our uh, you know, living environment. So only when we know what to choose and why we choose, why we learn this uh, method and why we learn Buddhism, then we would uh, no longer be superstitious towards it. We know why, we know the methods, we know the, the, the theory that it's based on. And we understand that Buddhism right, is meant to awaken us. Uh, after giving 49 years of sermon talks, uh, what's the most important thing? What, what is he talking about? You know, after giving so many years of speech, everything is about the truth of universe and our life. Uh, universe is vast, right? A lot of planet, solar system, Milky Way. Uh, why did that happen? Why is it so many? And if you go down to the microscopic level to us, our life. Uh, so what does universe mean? Universe means in our sense is our environment our living environment uh, universe includes your current living environment have you understood your own universe your living environment what kind of attitude you should in face of your current environment not just physical one also the people when it's dealing with people it's also part of the environment or things, events. So the universe is environment. Life is ourself. Talking about self, you, individual. This path of life and to death, birth to death. Some people, from the born all the way to the death, when he's old and die, he didn't. St he's still not clear about his life. Uh, purpose of life. If you look at the common uh, majorities, live. How do they live their life? Earn, eat, sleep, wake up, work. And then when you ask, what's your value? What's your principle in life? What's the most important principle and value you have in your life? What's your bottom line? They are not clear about it. So we can summarize this kind of life as. You came this came to this world without a clue. You go depart from this world without a clue. 
and that's the fortune part we have you know no matter our cultivation level that's the fortune part we have right now is we understand we have a purpose we have given an option to have a purpose beyond waking up brush eat earn money come back home you know bath sleep and then repeat rinse and repeat those are mechanical part right, right. but for us we're fortunate in this regard uh, we have learned buddhism we have learned the meaning of buddha and, and himself what example he has if you look at young people young young people nowadays uh, a lot of common habit is a lot of uh, time was wasted uh, on something by them on something that is meaningless in long run is is meaningless uh, even some even uh, use their parents wealth position power to commit atrocities to or to commit killings sexual misconducts uh, something that is pointless for example even the whole world uh, we use a very extreme one like drugs and majority of it is young people who hooked into these side drugs intoxicants and if you have no guide your life is just gone just like that when we must understand after learning buddhism it takes a huge fortune a lot of merits to be able to born into human world in the human body in the human uh, world therefore we should not waste it from this we understand when Buddha is talking about all all the sutras all right, it's all about ourself it refers to yourself uh, the target of his speech is you uh, and your environment that means your life and your universe if we do not get this point after hearing all the sutras or reading all the sutras or dharma talks then it becomes separated uh, our life becomes uh, separated from what was learned in the book it's pointless then so from 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 something that's supposed to be related to our life we treat it as something separated from us and it becomes like a not reading a novel right and there's no benefit from it it becomes a superstition today uh, if you ask one person uh, who claim they learn buddhism uh, why how do you practice buddhism uh, what is buddhism he might one might answer today uh, i chant using the beats i chant the sutra and then when i ask why do you learn this i think learning buddhism is all about chanting and reading the sutras and they have the at most people have the attitude of you know looking at the at the statute and like i chant the sutra for him so that he can bless me something like that but we must understand the sutra came from buddha he's the one who gave us the teaching he doesn't need you to read to him the whole point is for you to use what was what you learn and to use it in your life generate into something useful for you in your life that's the point of chanting so Buddha's Dharma, no matter its scale, its depth, its level, uh, all of them has are related to your life. Uh, not just related, intricately tied. Because it teaches you how to deal with people, deal with challenges, uh, what kind of mentality you have in order to overcome these hurdles after hurdles uh, in everyday life. Especially when you're not happy when you felt trapped depressed it can help you to transform this stuck up stuck situation into something uh, actionable movable 
That's why Mr. Oh Yang Jing Wu, he's from the early nationalist era, and he's a very famous Buddhist scholar. He said that Buddhism is a necessity for today's society. Because if today there's if there's none of this teaching of wisdom, like Buddhism, for that, let's not talk about others, myself, I couldn't change my habits without guidance. After learning only then I realized I do have a problem called I identify a problem called bad temper or lying. After learning, I understood what Buddha said. Words can bring calamities if not used wisely. Uh, if it's used unwisely, it brings disasters to yourself. Also, you will take away your merits. All your goods, all goods that happens to you will be, will, will be taken away because of your own doing or bad words. And you cause a lot of you will plant a lot of seeds of enmity, 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 or cause making a lot of enemies. And then beyond that, like virtues wise, like if you're not being uh, respectful and loving to your own parents, then your own children will do the same as you do to your own parents. So none of this is superstitious. Using what you read from the sutra, what you heard from the Dharma talk, you must use it every second, every moment, every minute to fix, to transform your weakness, to overcome your uh, your your habit bad habits, to direct yourself, to guide yourself using the teaching, uh, to implement this teaching in your own life. That way, you can guide yourself into a better life. It is like a lamp uh, that lights light up the path in front of us so that we can walk on the right one. So this is a simple introduction of how we choose correctly of what to learn from Buddhism because it has so many options. Because a fail, a wrong choice will cause you to use all the energy with no result at all. It spent it wasted your energy basically your life is your energy like in university after learning all these years have you used it have we be able to use what you learn in your life right if you didn't able to use what you learn then you wasted your time everyone has the experience when after spending so many years in education institution therefore in buddhism the same thing happens we need to choose correctly correct to what correct to our capability correct to our living environment uh, suitable to our current realities our live uh, our era so uh, once we understood what to choose among many methods of buddhism learning we also need to pick where do we start when practicing buddhism Right? How do we get real benefit from Buddhism? We must know about this as well. Like when I first arrived in Taiwan, a lot of people introduce many ways. This is good. This that method is good. And I'm confused where to start because I am looking for somewhere to start. Everything has a start. Only then you could learn when you know where to start. Only then you can build up and become successful. So this is what we call a right understanding. And the right understanding in this context is choosing the where to start our journey of cultivations of Buddhism. Otherwise, people will look at you and say, you after learning so many years, you know nothing about what you learn, or you are clueless about it. Uh, it becomes superstition then, because you don't know what you're doing. There were people, you know, coming to my, the temple I recite in and say how Buddhism, how he perceived Buddhism is. You know, he doesn't understood what Buddhism is from his. Up, uh, from what he see on the outside, 
feels like that, uh, superstitious and all that. So therefore, right now, we're talking about what does all these names, statutes of Buddha mean? Uh, what does the name and statutes and their post of Buddha and Bodhisattva refers to? Uh, what do they try to symbolize? Otherwise, every time we ch pray to these Buddha and Bodhisattvas, we do not know why we're doing that, what we're trying to do from this. Uh, if you ask one of the Buddhists and say, why are you praying to the Buddhas? We need to be able to question, I mean, answer it. Sorry. So this is what we call, in Buddhism, is we call it expedient means. Or using a modern word is using a highly sophisticated uh, art to educate. An artful education. And Buddhism, since its inception 2,500 years ago, it has developed into an art form in when it talks, it, it talks about using of art to educate the masses. Using, the, for now, technology, we have movies, musics, and all that to express the educational content of Buddhism. And in old days, when I read the movies of, when I started, when I read the movies, watched the movie of Six Patra of Zen Buddhism in China, Master Hui Neng, right? Uh, I read his sutra, the Six Patriarch Sutra. Uh, I learned about him from this art format, from this media, uh, and I felt a sense of respect and reverence towards him. And therefore, this is one example of how art was being used to educate, and this is necessary. Uh, it's necessary for us to know how they educate and how we learn using these techniques. For example, Bodhisattva Guan Yin, Bodhisattva uh, Siddhikapa or Tiza, uh, no matter their image, their name, uh, or offering the ceremony, offering of flower, of water, of fruits, what are they trying to symbolize? What are they trying to tell us doing this? Um, it, do us doing this is to remind us in our daily life to cultivate the virtues each of these action or if of each of these Buddha and Bodhisattva represents. They all symbolize a certain virtues we should learn. So what kind of virtues? For example, in, in some, to summarize them, it, it taught us to be gentle, to be kind, to be respectful, to be frugal, right? and also let others go first. You know? When, when it comes to our daily life. Beyond that is the precepts. No killing, no sexual misconduct, no stealing, no lying, no slanderous words, and no uh, intoxicants. So those are all about the conducts of our daily lives. Help us to regulate our conducts, restrain ourselves. And right now, in our daily life, we have to use this conduct to, to, to live right, with other people. Right? If everyone has no good manners and lack of conduct, lack of restraint, it becomes hard to deal with. It, life becomes harder, right? In work, in family, in everywhere. So if you look at the world, people nowadays, most people, how are they behaving? A lot of arrogance, a lot of bias, a lot of... Um, uh, like tendency to control others, controls to um, disrespect easily, to be disrespectful to others, not giving other people space, right? Not just other people, strangers, but to their own family, parents, siblings, teachers. So lacking of this education, this is the consequence. And one very solid example, visual example is food. In canteen, so canteen, school canteen, university canteen. All these kids and, and young people when they're in the school, see how many people wasted the food given to them. And if you look at modern society, how many people are actually cultivating the virtue of um, 
patience towards others instead of trying to get one off, one up over another. So the basics of virtues is to let everyone to be more kind towards one another, respectful towards one another. You know, the elders who uh, require care and love will be taken care of. So these symbols help us, remind us uh, to bring out our compassions, uh, our pure mind, to cultivate a pure mind and also a, a joyful outlook of life and giving heart in our daily life and through daily practice, trade daily um, cultivations, like doing this every time. You know, get used to being kind, get used to being gentle, get used to being good. Otherwise, if we don't understand why they have this symbolized way of education, otherwise we will become superstitious. We just do it for the sake of doing it. We don't know why we're doing this. People will say you are superstitious. Or, uh, bringing people into a wrong path. You know, they are not productive towards the society. Uh, what offering what flower, water, fruit, uh, because you want to idol worship some statue made of woods or clay or gold. So those are those are just materials. Why are you doing that? Because if we don't understand what it means, it looks like that, isn't it? So now we are learning about understanding Buddhism. One of them is in offering incense when we do the uh, offerings. And what is offering incense mean? It brings. It means. It has meaning. It has everything has a meaning, and it means we are receiving the Dharma without giving any doubts. Uh, right now, the biggest, biggest problem of learning this path of enlightenment, uh, what is the biggest obstacle for Buddhists? It's not, the biggest obstacle is not the greed, hatred, ignorance. It's not about uh, attachment to the sense, desires and power and fame. Those are not the biggest obstacle actually. The biggest obstacle is your doubt, suspicious tendency to suspicious, suspect easily. For example, you chant Amitabha, and then the follow following thoughts arise: Or oh, can did he actually mean it? Is it for real? Uh, can I truly put reborn in pure land? Can I truly be uh, blessed? If you don't even have a basic confidence in the teacher. How can you take in all his teachings and how do you build up the confidence? So learning from sages teaching, uh, Buddhism and Confucius, all that, they all start from confidence into characters of our teacher. Confidence into cause and effect. Do good will reap good, do bad will reap bad. The iron law. If we use doubt, Everything becomes like you cannot stand on anything, right? Oh, the, those those are those are the techniques used by these people to control the masses, or used by these people to uh, scare them from not doing good. So everyone should do bad. Everyone should just fall into that, uh, doubt being into one another, their own family. Uh, even worse, some was thinking, okay, I only live here. I only come to this world once, right? So I can do anything I want without restraint. <laughs> How can we live a happy life like that? So returning back to understanding why we're offering incense, right? It's not to uh, make Buddha happy or make Bodhisattva happy, right? It's not to uh, give uh, fragrance to them, no. It's reminding ourselves. It's all about you. It's all for you. They are doing all this for yourself. To understand, to learn. All right. To be confident in his teaching, to strengthen the confidence, and also be kind, be a fragrance towards people around you. All right. When you light the incense, when you smell the, ar uh, the aromatic smell of incense, you must remind that everything I speak, everything I do, 
my character has to be as warm and as fragrant like an incense. That means being kind, you always benefit other people, always care and considerate for them. Uh, and on the other hand, I do not want to be someone who harm or everything I speak, everything I do is harm, harmful or hurtful to those that. That's why we light the incense. Uh, so when you light incense, the first thing you should think about is I must guard my spe speech, my, my mouth. Uh, prevent it from becoming a sword that harms you. Most of the time it's people close to you. And in the other hand, we need to remind when we smell this in fragrance of incense, we must remind ourselves how many kindness you have received when you were born. And Buddhism categorizes into four kindness to repay. First is parents, without saying, without needing to state. Second is the teachers who give you wisdom, give you ability to see. Third is your country. Countries that allow you to have a society that is peaceful, to grow. And the last one is the sentient beings who provide everything you have in need in your life. And that's why we have this ceremony, offering incense. Second, offering of flower. What does flower mean? Flower means coarse, seeds. When you look at the flower, you think of the coarse. There are common conception of uh, offering flowers. Uh, you will look good. Uh, or you will become beautiful in the next life or when you go on in your life. Or most most ladies, you know, um, they heard of this um, common uh, words that, you know, you, you uh, offer flowers. Uh, you will, if you offer the Buddha the flower, uh, you will look good. Uh, you will get more uh, your look will be more dignified. Uh, but it's it's not the actual meaning, you know. It's not the ultimate meaning of it. So when you look at a lot of a Sadama ceremony, a lot of uh, women are giving the uh, flowers because of this understanding. But the actual meaning of offering flowers uh, in depth, when you look, go deeper, is to cultivate good cause. Why? If you look at uh, the society, there are people born in poor poverty, some people born to wealth, born to the position of high power, great power. It has all, it has everything to do with the cause. They cultivate it. Some people fall into the realm of animal, to the realm of hell or hungry ghost. It's also because of the cause they cultivate in the past. So, in simpler words, remind yourself of cause means prevent yourself from creating the cause of your sufferings or bad deeds, which is the cause of suffering. Your speech, your action, your thought. So when you remind yourself through the offering of flowers, you remind yourself of your deeds, uh, your attitudes. Uh, has to be as the same as the Buddha that you offer the flower to. My cause must be the same as the Amitabha or any Buddha Bodhisattva you're offering to. That's the point. To remind ourselves in our living environment, environment, everything is also impermanent. Flower is impermanent, isn't it? It, wilt, it wilted very quickly. So also remind us that everything you live, everything you have, the relationship you have and all that, it will change as time goes on. This is impermanence of life, one of the facts. And uh, we do not get too attached to, to it from this understanding. And from here, this small example, we can see how Buddhism overcome, uh, overtakes all forms of education in the world. Other than that, we have offering of water. Offering of water is not mentioned in the slide, but it says that water, clean water, right, is when it's not moved, it's pure. It's pure. One thing, it's equal, right? Flat. That means do not be uh, tainted by greed, hatred. That means pure heart. Do not be by uh, discriminative, which is equal in your heart. 
So from this example, we understand that all these uh, offering of flowers, incense, and the water or, or names of Buddha, statue of Buddha, Bodhisattvas, they are all to remind us. Uh, Bodhisattva's statue require, uh, represents the virtue you cultivate. And when you completed the virtues, this is what Buddha accomplishment of virtue looks like through the image of Buddha. <laughs> so now I have talked up, uh, I was supposed to talk until, you know, uh, half an hour, nine o'clock, but um, we have extended uh, beyond that. I hope that we can, uh, uh, you should, uh, uh, myself should remind uh, me uh, the time. 45 minutes instead of one hour. So, so next week, next Wednesday, we'll continue uh, how uh, we get, how do, where do we start in learning Buddhism? Where do we enter? Uh, which door do we enter, so to speak, uh, in Buddhism so that we can achieve successful, a success in it? So now I would like to wish you all a good evening, uh, healthy healthy life, uh, every day, be happy, be positive, be optimistic, no matter what happened, able to see through. If you can see through as much as you can, you see through as much as you can. Because life is impermanent. It changes every day. There's no need for uh, clinging to it and putting too much into your heart, making it burdened and heavy. No matter how unhappy the situation is, you always uh, always remind yourself, I need to keep going with a heads up without problem, without uh, burdened by it. Uh, look at myself, I don't have a very smooth and happy situation. Uh, you thought I'm just relaxed. No, I have a lot of problems and all of them uh, are, are not always uh, with, uh, according to my wishes. Most of them are not. But what I can do is I change my attitudes in face of it so that I can keep going. All right? Uh, be positive. All right. Thank you so much. I hope you all uh, uh, meet again next week about learning Buddhism. Next week, uh, we also learn uh, together. Because of your participation uh, of understanding Buddhism, uh, it also gives other people confidence into learning uh, this. So thank you. Good night. Mm -hmm. uh, let's dedicate our merit. I'd like to borrow this opportunity to dedicate the merits. I um, will lead uh, and you guys can follow. hope that we can uh, receive the blessings from the Buddha and Bodhisattvas. May the merits and virtues accrue from this work. I, Venerable Xia Wu or Dylan, use your own name, would like to dedicate the merits of listening to the Dharma to all the karmic creditors of all lives so that they can all be received by Amitabha Buddhas to the pure land. I also like to medicate and marry to uh, beings of all, unit, all directions, everywhere, so that they can be liberated from sufferings and achieve ultimate happiness. Repay the four kinds, nurses above, relieve the suffering of those in three paths below. May those who see and hear of this aspire to invoke the body heart, Cultivate the teachings of for the rest of this life, then be born together in the land of ultimate peace. Namah Amitabha.